right, okay, let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to episode three of Offset for today, January 4th, 2023. It's great to have you guys here. If you're just tuning in for the first time, welcome to Offset, the time where I get to take over Adobe Live and bring on really cool and creative people and ask them about their process, their work, and what inspires them. Um, today, we're going to have Claudia from So Excited Now, which I'm very excited to introduce you guys to. She is a graphic designer and a branding uh, consultant online and I found her through Instagram. She does a lot of really great posts about great resources, how she approaches her proposals and her branding. Um, she has a really good eye for design and creating really pretty things while also making them structurally um, recognizable for brands, which I think is really important. Um, we'll be going through, like I said, her work, her inspiration, um, and getting to know her a little bit more. Um, I'm very excited to introduce you to her. This is her first time on Adobe Live. So if you guys could please give her a very warm welcome, that would be awesome. Um, I'm going to bring her in in just a second. But before we do that, I just want to say hi to Oliver and Annika, Caroline, Mike, Misty, Ola, Sam. Thank you for moderating, Sam. Um, uh, Mike, Zachary Bromberg, who was actually on Adobe Live a little bit ago um and uh anthony jackson it's really good to see you guys here if you're over on youtube please head on over to behance it's where all the conversation is happening uh, and where i'll be keeping an eye on for comments and questions for claudia as we go through this q a style of a uh, stream uh with that said it's going to be very podcasty in the way that if you have questions or comments and since it's a live stream please by all means go in and um post in the chat if you have any questions for her and i will relay them to her as well if you're on youtube make sure you click that link and you hop over behance that way i don't miss your comments and your questions so without further ado i'm very excited to introduce you to claudia uh here you go hey claudia how's it going hi good i'm so excited to be here <laughs> yeah it's awesome to have you thank you for joining um what time yeah, is it where you are um it's like 9 p.m Oh, okay. Well, thank you for um, keeping your work day going long just for us uh, over yeah. here on the East Coast. It's uh, about 3.40, so it is uh, just still a little bit earlier afternoon, um, but we appreciate you tuning in. Do you want to take a second just to kind of introduce yourself and what you're all about? Yeah, so I am a brand and graphic freelance designer, and I'm only like freelancing for a couple of months now. So I'm really trying to figure things out as I go. Congratulations. So I guess, yeah, I guess I kind of wanted to have like my own community. So I started my Instagram and I shared my work. And like, I think I built this space for other designers and creatives. We can like share our knowledge and inspire each other. And yeah, here I am. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, that's fantastic. I'm really excited that you um, have just been freelancing for a little bit. What got you into freelancing? Um, I guess I always was like really used to like online work because of like, you know, the pandemic and all that stuff. And a lot of my friends after like university and graduation graduating started like freelancing. So I really wanted to try it on my own. Oh, that's great. Um, and it's been going well. You, you're enjoying the freelance life? Yeah, but like you have to be like really organized and committed to this. So I guess it's not for everyone, but like it's a really cool experience. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a great actually transition into looking at your work because you do a really good job at also documenting your experience and also showing other people how you, or you're organized and how you organize your clients. So let's take a look at your work. Let's look at your work. So you are so excited now on Instagram. So I went ahead and pulled that up. Um, and these are your most recent posts that you've had, including um, the one where you said everything I include in my product proposal. Um, and you've really found a good way to hone the idea of using reels as an informative breakdown of any sort of subject that you're having, but still keeping it short. 
what got you into reels and how do you approach when you're creating one? Um, so I always want to make it fun, uh, like really showing my process and like very like informative. So like everyone can take out something from this reel and like um, implement it to their process. So this is like really important to me to like share as much information as I possibly can in this like short amount of time. <laughs> so this is like really challenging. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's it's great. I mean, this one in itself is what like only like 15 seconds long and yeah. you can easily get all of your breakdown of everything that you have. Um, whenever you're approaching a client with a product proposal, are you normally kind of just building these and then sending them over as a PDF or do you normally like meet with them and walk them through the proposal? So I usually send them like send it over uh, in PDF and then if the client has like uh, any more questions or like or I want to change anything because that happens as well then we can hop on a meeting that's fantastic and it's uh, always kind of the same template that you always have with um, like this green background and this change or does that change from client to client um, for, for the project proposal yeah it's like always the same Oh, that's great because then then you can just kind of create a template and then just fill it neat means to mean so you don't have to recreate the wheel every yeah, single time yeah, that exactly. you're going through um, now, obviously, your proposal isn't the whole part of it. You're going in and you're working on branding and you're working on packaging design. What got you into this field of work and what do you enjoy doing most? Um, so like packaging design is like really cool because you can see like your work live, I guess. So I guess I just wanted to see how my projects would look in real life. And I started doing packaging design. Yeah, I love how even with this one, like you added an animated element to it just yeah. to kind of make it fit into the feed even more so because everything likes to move so much. Yeah, um, I really got into animation this year. So I try to like incorporate it everywhere I can, <laughs> even if it's like this simple one like here. Yeah, or yeah, even like a changing color of a background. Um, now for this one with Hot Cocoa, are you individually going through and like drawing these individual um strokes or was this a, a pen that you or a brush that you created yeah so i did this in adobe fresco and like you have to sample the brush on your own so i did that in procreate and yeah and i sampled the brush in adobe fresco and i just like hand draw that oh beautiful um yeah. I, I like how it, it it you know wraps around and you can get the full uh, like 360 motion that um, happened when when you're like switching as if you were actually going in and just writing it out with like a whipped cream can. <laughs> yeah, so this was like actually one of the projects that I was like 100% in love with, but um, I like the idea like hot cocoa and making it look like whipped cream. So I guess because of the idea, I decided to post it. But like, I don't always post um, like my projects that I absolutely love. Sometimes it's like not perfect, but I still want to show it. Yeah, I mean, I had so much of um, kind of like the struggle with social media and the idea of like, do you want it to be this perfect refined thing? Or is it kind of just like throw at everything that you kind of create and then have the wall and kind of have it be as a reflection or is it this happy medium and it's interesting it it seems to differ from person to person as to like what mm -hmm. works and what doesn't work um it, how long have you been kind of consistently posting your work uh, on instagram and, and and building this kind of new following that you have so i started like more than a year ago mm -hmm. and like since then i post like pretty consistently and you have this content calendar, so you're obviously sitting down and you're planning out like when and how much you want to post. Is there any um, approach that you found successful for this uh, that you're kind of leaning on? Or are you continuing to experiment and still trying to figure out the best route of how you plan out what you're going to post? So uh, I find it like it's easier when you like see the i guess layout in like one big calendar and like you can see day to day what you're going to post and then you know what you should have focus on on this day so this is like 
Be because before that I had like a really messy approach. So I guess I kind of got lost in this. And this is like a lot when you try to post every day. So like a structured approach is like really important. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's something that's relatively new that you just kind of been playing with recently. Yeah, because I recently I got really into like content planning and Instagram and all, all that stuff. And I find it like really helpful in my um, work as a designer because like it really gets me going and I want to like work more and do more projects because I can post them somewhere, you know? Right. Not keep, it that, not keep them to myself. And it's also cool that you're taking this approach of like the idea that um, you're taking your expertise and you're reformatting it and giving it to others so that other people don't have to kind of figure it out for themselves. You kind of are, are good at being able to take it and formulate it and then repackage it and send it back out in its own on top of already kind of identifying and showcasing your own portfolio and your work. Um, do you have a recent piece of your work that you um, favor over other ones? Um, I really like this project called Bluma. This is a plant studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, um, I really like those organic, like hand drawn, not perfect shapes. And I guess that because it's like not perfect and it looks like really handmade, I guess I really like it. Yeah. Did you, um, use a typeface for this Bluma or do, or is this all hand drawn type? No, this is a type first called Marax, I believe. It's like in the caption. And um, were, did you find that first and then build the secondary logo off of that? Or did you kind of build out these shapes and then find a typeface that works well with the things that you've created? It, no, I find the typeface first and then like it's like irregular and like kind of like um, sharp. So I wanted to create shapes that would fit this. Now, um, I know a lot of people are like working with um, brand languages more so than um, identities sometimes. And I it kind of got this idea off of this implementation of symbols into your text that you have and being able to use this iconography elsewhere around the brand. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that was intentional or did that something that kind of just like evolved as you were documenting the piece? Um, yeah, I guess it kind of evolved because like sometimes words can express exactly what you want to like show with the visual. So if you like incorporate like some icons and like images uh, with the text, it likes really um, to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good way to like continuously reinforce the idea of the brand and the idea of um kind of like having ownership over the words, even if the words are still something that align with the brand itself, um, which is cool. And then how did you come along the um, color scheme for this one? Um, so this is a plant studio. So I was thinking about like organic, very like a greenery kind of color palette. So yeah, so I chose like some greens and some purples and then I muted them. And this is like actually my, um, latest favorite color combo like greens and purples is there a certain way that you approach when you're creating colors to find ones that work well together or do you kind of just find one that you want and go off from there so that depends on a project but i guess i um always try to find like a color combo that really can complement each other yeah, with um, with color, I feel like it's so easy to get caught up in the idea of just like one color too much and then it doesn't end up working with others. But I think with this one in particular, the idea of the two kind of harmoniously um, complementing each other and always being um, blended together is cool. And then you have this pop of purple that is almost like a flower that is, you know, the extension of the saturation when it comes to colors and plant in life. Um, Zachary says kind of reminds me of needlepoint, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. because yeah, I feel like I could, especially with like these, um, seeds or they could also even be used as, um, like a, 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 a water spout of some kind, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so with, with Instagram, it seems like 
you've done a good distribution between um, like autobiographical, uh, editorial, helping others, and also showcasing your own work. Have you found a favorite as to like what you most enjoy posting? Is it uh, when you just get to post something that you're really proud of, or is it something when you kind of get to talk to your audience? Um, so I like posting like those, like you can see here in, on the left, like this is a, um, a carousel post with like a text on the slides. And mm -hmm. I like to write those, write those because I feel like I'm writing a blog or something. And, um, yeah, I'm like sharing the stuff that I learned through my journey and, you know, it's only called a knowledge when you can share it with others. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love that. Um, and like, I really like to see people like relate to this or, or have like different opinions or like bring something to the table and like, uh, if I can learn something from them. So yeah, it seems like yeah, you have a lot of comments that people tend to like give like big paragraphs to and really create conversation yeah, I love them. based off of it, which is cool. Yeah, yeah I love reading them. So. And like everyone have like such a different experience. So this is like really cool. I mean, that's the other crazy thing about, you know, uh, any of the algorithms and the, any way that we approach social media is like, we kind of all have similar experiences, but I also sometimes like will be with someone and I'm like, can I just see your feed? Can I just see your algorithm? Like what you're getting served and what you're seeing each day with the stuff that you're creating. Um, just because, yeah, like the smallest changes can make the biggest impact. And it's interesting to see what works for some people and what doesn't work for others. Um, but I know I'm kind of like picking at your brain right now and uh, trying to figure out how it works just because I, I love seeing how stuff um, is, is working for you and what's not working for you. Um, and uh, one of our segments that we have is let me look at your sketchbook, which is our way of looking behind the curtain and seeing how things work. You were kind enough to send over some files, so I'd love to check them out. Ooh, what's in your sketchbook? So the first thing we have here is the acai um, organic vegan yogurt. And I love how you can even like see outside of the art board, uh, bar, bar, art board um, <laughs> to kind of see like what ended up being the constrained um, piece of final artwork. Uh, how did you go about creating this? Um, what does this say about your your piece? Um, and what? Yeah. What, what can you say? Um, so this is like a um, brand from like a brief uh, that I found on Instagram and I started to work on this and like I had this idea to make it like really um, fun and friendly and like with those like outline illustrations and like um, two colors max and then I started doing this and I was like I don't like this anymore and I couldn't look at this and like I just ditched the whole idea and um yeah but I oh, now no. I love it and I really like it so yeah okay um I do <laughs> so, like some of the things you have here like I like the the circle within the circle for dairy free um and the idea that it adds this extra um organic element to it that goes alongside what we saw kind of in your previous bloom piece with these dots yeah. um and then I like how the, the strands of the flannel kind of also ebb and flow with the, the shape of the like organic like flow of the shoulders, which is really nice. Yeah, um, so the idea was to make like more characters uh, for each like label, but I just never got to finish it. No, I, I get that. Um, and the one last thing I will say about this one is I really like the fingers for the hands because as we can see off the artboard there is no extension of the fingers or of the hands but from a cropped perspective like it gives us everything that we need to know to understand mm -hmm. that that is not only not a part of the shirt but it is this familiar hand structure um and i think it's really nice thank you do you feel like you often are kind of working in this way where you're working um, pretty close to the artboard, but just barely outside the space? Because I know for like my projects, a lot of times I'll have like shapes that go all the way out here and up and all oh, yeah. over the side. But this feels very like organized and cut down. Did you clean this up or are you pretty good at like just like just staying to the artboard? Um, 
that also depends on a project because sometimes like if I don't like if I didn't think about like what do I want to do with this brand and like how do I want this to go then like my artboards artboards can like get really messy Uh but if I have like a pretty like clear idea in my head what I want to do then like I kind of stick to the artboard and don't like experiment outside (laughs) yeah brilliant um so next up you have included um is for bluma which we actually already were just looking at um and this actually has the genuine um sketchbook parts of it that you have like ripped out um do you feel like you normally start within a like paper and pen sketchbook or does it differ from product to product so if i like feel really creative i want want to do something right now and like just get into the like uh, designing part then I just hop on into illustrator and like start designing but if I want to make like a more complex brand then I like want to see the layout of everything and And so for this one it just like you just kind of let from head head to paper just kind of like wanting to explore kind of different things I see you like scratching things out um Is that just kind of finding the brand language? Yeah, yeah. So like how the brand like should feel and what it should like, what is the brand's message? And based on that, like I make the design. So, but I really want to like first write it down and like get the right words and the right uh, type of vibe and feeling before I start designing. And these go from paper straight to digital but you recreate them in entirety on um on the computer right it's not like you're scanning them in and then like tracing no. them or anything right no because no. I, I can see down here and in, in the bottom right like we have some of these organic um plant shapes that i feel like later show up but i feel like by the time they've made it on illustrator they've kind of been reimagined and yeah. kind of created straight for digital yeah exactly oh very cool um then we have this i fluff you uh <laughs> which yeah, i love the colors of this one uh just the vibrance of them and how they interact with one another um where did this come from and uh w- what inspired to take this approach uh so this was like or also a brand from a brief that i found on instagram and this is for like um toys and accessories for dogs so obviously i instantly had in my head an image of dogs and then I thought like thought I thought like let's make a a whole group of different dogs and I wanted to use this like kind of playful retro color palette and I started doing this and yeah I now, guess it was the same as with the previous brand like I just kind of stop and never get to it again <laughs> But with this retro style of colors, were you referencing anything in particular or were you just kind of messing with it until you found something that felt retro to you? Um, so this was, I think, based on a rebrand of Emma Chamberlain's Coffee. And if you, oh, don't, yeah? if you don't know what that is, we are going to talk about this later, I think. <laughs> <laughs> she um, had a, a arch- architectural digest of her house or what have you and she brings over and she walks over to the branding of the of the coffee and she just like touches on it very briefly but i was like wait a second i want to see i want to see what that actually is (laughs) (laughs) um so i think i think that works really well especially for the piece because it it feels retro and it feels um separate from like coffee ties like it doesn't necessarily feel like it has that coffee scheme that then has been replicated onto something else because it feels like you know, it is its own thing um, and can easily be applied to dogs, even though dogs aren't traditionally blue, you know, (laughs) Um, I, as the viewer still can believe it, which is neat. Um, And so did you create these just the pen tool and illustrator or these ones that you've kind of like brushed out uh, with like a, like a brush of some sort and then brought into mess with um, an illustrator? Yeah. So I created like the dogs illustrations in procreate and then I exported them in PNG. So this is how, if like you see uh, any type of illustrations, like more complex, like those with like those black lines and all that stuff in my work, then it's usually made in Procreate. Oh, gotcha. Um, but you said you also use Fresco, right? For when you were using like the, um, 
like the whipped cream and stuff. Yeah, I used that only once because I wanted to make that like a uh, typeface. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so for this one, you have um, Luna Sage, which is uh, what what kind of is this like for a coffee brand? So I don't really remember what that was, but I think some kind of like rings or like earrings, some type of stuff. Um, so this was like also a brief from Instagram. And with this, I was like really um, trying to find my style and I didn't know at that time what it was. And I guess it was like kind of influenced on what I saw on Instagram at that time, which was like really dark and witchy branding. And I wanted to like recreate that um, mm -hmm. in one of my projects. But like I was like... Mm, you know that's just not for me <laughs> yeah it definitely feels different from the other things yeah. that you've created um but i still think it's successful i think um you can see your attention to merging illustration and type together um how do you normally find type that you like is it something that you just keep a list of or is it something that um you kind of go from project to project and just scroll through ones that you um find enjoyable Mm, so I have like a lot of different typefaces downloaded on my computer. So I just like kind of scroll through all of the lists and find the right one. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I try to like see a like typeface guides on the internet or something like that to see um, what other people are using. 100%. Um, next up, we have this natural matcha. Um, and you're obviously you're sitting here, you're playing with some shapes and some patterns. Um, what brought this to be? Yeah, so this was I wanted to try like try out something different and more like sharp and like because I feel like a lot of my designs tend to lean on the like feminine side. OK, So with this one, I wanted to try like experiment more on the like more masculine side. I don't know if I achieved that or not. So the idea was to like create like those really sharp, dark patterns and like um, uh, place them on the label with this like ge geometrical typeface. Yeah, I really like also how like down here there's this optical illusion of how they're all close together and it creates this web like yeah. webbed optical illusion and then they kind of spread out, which is nice. Um, is this something that you could find uh, incorporating into other pieces of your work with a pattern or a um, kind of optical illusion? Yeah, if I like right now, uh, when I'm looking at this, I really like how this looks. So I think I should like try to experiment more with, more with this type of stuff and see how this like um, how I could like implement this in like the designs that I do now. But yeah. Oh. It's like really like something different and like interesting to look at. So I guess I'm always trying to find, make, come up with like projects that are interesting to look at and that everyone can find something like different in it. Yeah, um, I think that this is a really cool exploration of like brand recognition and the idea of like taking a pattern and being able to tie it to an identity is something that could be really successful for lots of different executions. What well, if you got into packaging design or if you got into, um, you know, like a app of some sort, just being able to replicate that and being able to um, showcase it in a, a brand setting. I think it's a really good exploration. So um, next up, we have comfy and stylish uh, slow Saturdays. Uh, where where did this come from and what is this about? Um, so as you can probably see at this point, all of this stuff that I sent you over, like, uh, are the designs that I really try to experiment with and like find my own style. That's the beauty um, of a sketchbook, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually um, inspired by like those minimalistic, luxurious, very like elegant um, brands. So I wanted to try this on my own and see if I like it or not. And like, turns out that I don't like it <laughs> and it's not my style <laughs> because like uh, you might think that a mini minimalistic design is like really simple and easy, but it's like actually really hard. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that they all came out very successful though. I, th I really like um, 
this kind of art deco slow Saturdays you have on the bottom right um, as it kind of unfolds and, and turns into a seal. But it does feel very different from kind of the insignia that you have in the center, which almost feels um, almost like a stamp or like a, I don't know, like a clothing brand that uh, yeah. I would see like in like a nautic environment, you know, like maybe like Martha's Vineyard or something. Um, but it is cool to see that like, you continue to explore. Do you feel like you found anything out about your own style while you are playing with this, even if you decide that this isn't the approach that you want to take? Um, so right now I feel like I know what I like and know what I don't like. And the stuff that I don't like is like based on what I've tried before. So like, uh, for example, like this minimalistic, very elegant design. So this is something that I'm not good at because like um, you can even see on this one that all of this like um, stuff here are really leaning towards different uh sites so i was kind of left like all over the place and i didn't know what to do with this so yeah but i feel like my style is not like 100 percent defined i feel like i'm still going there but i like i'm not there yet <laughs> yeah i feel like it's a lifelong exploration yeah. and development as we all grow um but I think it is really cool to be able to see kind of how things continue to change. Uh, that said, this next one that you have included, I feel like is a lot closer to something that you are kind of familiar with oh. now, which are these bright colors and these very cool serif fonts. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about Tiger Cove? Yeah. So, um, so like a fun fact, I have like a whole of separate folder on my like desktop called unfinished and it's like a lot of my unfinished projects and like I found this one in the folder and I was like oh I forget about it but I kind of like it right now and I would really like to try work on it more right now and like develop it more so um this is like a cosmetics brand mm, and I guess the stuff that I this here was going to go on like the packaging on front. So yeah, I want it to be the packaging like really vibrant and colorful and eye catchy. Yeah, I think that it has a cool neon younger vibe to it. I think that um, what am I trying to think of that one makeup brand? Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, it'll come to me later, but um, it's this idea of like these saturated like blues and greens that you don't necessarily, I guess, even normally traditionally have seen tied with cosmetics. Like you normally go with like the beiges and the browns and the reds, but it's really cool to see these cosmetic and makeup brands experiment with these neon colors that feel very young and edgy. Um, and I think that this works really well. It's also cool to see how these shapes are in, um, uh, interacting with like the G that you have here for Tiger Cove and the the, the loopiness of everything and how that kind of mm -hmm. also is resonating in the typeface as well. So a little hop and a skip. And then I can see up here that you have all these colors that you kind of reference. Do you create the strokes first and then went with colors and then messed with colors? Or was it something that you um, kind of came up with the colors first and then hopped into the shapes? So the uh, color palette came first and I, um, it's like really, uh, I found it that it's easier for me if I like have the color palette before I start doing anything because uh -huh. then I like don't want to change like the colors over and over again. <laughs> right. Cause then, then you can kind of just like, you don't have to then play with going back, eye dropping and changing and switching. Yeah. Um, but I think this is really cool. I it also I almost want to see these like three D printed, you know, as like mm -hmm. three objects that could exist in a space, um, and and it just gives me so many ideas to like continue. Do you think you'll ever revisit any of these ones that are unfinished? Um, in this case, I would like revisit this one. Yeah, like really develop it right now and see how this would like change. So that would be cool. Yeah, no, I feel yeah, like I said, that one is definitely the one that feels like it's probably closest to what you kind of have on your own. Um, 
page as it stands right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, also if we go ahead and we just pull back up kind of like something that you recently did, like I, I look at serene that we have here. Um, and then, um, kind of attach it to the thing that we just looked at and I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. I can kind of see this blobby form that kind of goes together. Um, and that's for active swimwear, which I think is really fun. Yeah. Um, do, how do you come up with some of the brands that you're going to be like working on and working with? Is it something that you give yourself a challenge to um, find like an industry that you want to design for? Or is it more so like you design something and you're like, oh, well, what would this be for? And then it kind of falls within an industry there. Um, so I... I usually stick to like a few different types of industries. So like clothes, skincare, like plant shops. Um, but I uh, really try to experiment this year with like food or like pet stuff or something like out of the box or not something that I've, I am familiar with. So this likes really give me, gives me perspective about the like branding and packaging design and all that stuff. Sick. Well, I think that's also a really good um, transition into doing some art talk to talk about some inspirations that you have. So we hinted at it a little bit already, which is um, uh, something that I just want to touch on, but you said that you really appreciated the branding of Emma Ch Chamberlain's coffee. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about why this inspires you? Yeah, so this was uh, made by a studio called Contrapunkt. Um, I believe that this is a studio based in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And um, like fun fact, the backstory behind this was that before the rebrand, the brand was focused really on Emma because like you know she's an influencer and a youtuber and this is like her brand so I guess it's kind of normal right. but what they did with the reblend re is that they created those like funny and relatable characters that represent like different types of personalities so like people can come for Emma and like try this try out this brand because of emma but like they stay with the brand because of the characters and like the brand board and i thought that was like really cool and like really thought out of um like rebrand yeah so uh obviously that's a, a a piece of evidence of like going and looking at a brand for its top most obvious like thing that resonates with people being able to reapproach it and say, okay, so maybe it's not the top, top thing. People don't want to, you know, just have Emma Chamberlain's face on all the coffee. What do we do? It's yeah. the second tier um, and rebranding it to find something that is a little bit more universal to maybe someone who doesn't even know. Yeah, um, exactly. Emma. And it's like uh, less dependent on her and like her success as a person. Right. And like, it's like, it has it like on different word. Now, have you tried any of this actual coffee? This is a real question. Um, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> I don't think I can buy it here in Poland. Oh, well, they, it's probably a big shipping fee or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it is cool to see, uh, it, even from just like a brand perspective of being able to see it and see how it um, is, you know, so full of energy and it, very reflective of her. Um, I do see that there are si similarities that you have with like your dog piece, um, mm -hmm. and the animals and then this, uh, with it. And also like the choice of different type that's going on. Like I really like mm -hmm. this weird R that's happening here. Like that doesn't make any sense, but it does when it's all put together. Yeah. And um, I love when design studios like make their own typefaces because they made this like, um, in their studio, Mm -hmm. And I just love this when they like came with a unique typeface for only this brand. Have you ever made your own typeface? Oh uh, yeah, I did actually. Oh, uh, what did you enjoy it? Do you think you'll ever do it again? No, it went like the whole process was like painful and just like really hard, long, and yeah. But like the outcome was like good, but like not the best. So like not not worth the painful process. 
So as somebody who is then um, like developing brands and developing uh, identities for different companies, would you find yourself maybe outsourcing for that? Or would you more so like try to find a existing typeface that then you would then be able to modify to fit the brand that you're working on? Yeah, right now I feel like uh, I'm doing like searching for fonts that will fit the whole brand vibe and maybe like tweak some things. But in the future, I would definitely see myself like outsourcing somebody that will like create this unique and cool typeface. Yeah, because I, I, I definitely agree. I think you can be successful with either, though, honestly. I think you don't necessarily have to have a custom typeface. Typeface, yeah. when it's unique to your brand, can be cool. But also, I think there's a lot of really beautiful typefaces out there that can be used um, in, in a way that uh, adds, adds enough flavor without, you know, having to reinvent the wheel. Um, but no, I think this is a really cool uh, rebrand. I, I kind of am curious as to see like what the um, initial one looked like. I want to see if I Google that. If I'm going to say, if I say like, wait, Chamber, Chamberlain Coffee. I'm not sure if I seen it actually. So I'm like really curious too. Um, because yeah, it'd be interesting to see like how they had it before. Oh yeah, it was not great before. It like looks like, um, I don't know, just like a generic coffee brand, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, it doesn't really have much. I mean, like the lips don't really say much. It, it looks like they definitely kept part of the um, feeling of mm -hmm. like, the arch and a similar typeface that obviously they created one and then went with. Um, but when you're going and you're rebranding a brand, what are some of the things that you take to make sure that you're still keeping the same vibe and same feel um, with your update? Um, so like you just have to look like um, to like you just have to look like from the perspective like what is the problem and what works and what doesn't and then like see what is like the best part of this current branding and if you want to like um, move it to like the new or leave it and like just try out something like new so you have to like stick to like at this in this case like to this typeface because i think they thought like this is a really cool typeface and gives like this kind of retro vibe vintage vibe and then like came up with a with a vintage color palette and like really complemented each other yeah just because yeah you can see them side by side even here it's like you can kind of still say that they're the same but one definitely feels more polished than the other um, even something as simple as like this highlight of this yellow next to this green on the edge, I think yeah. goes a very long and way. And the previous branding like gives me like this type of family owned brand that is like here for like hundred years. <laughs> and this right. one, like is like really trendy and because she's like 21, isn't she? Yeah. She's, like... Yeah, she's really, um... really young. It does not the 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 old branding does not feel like a twenty one year old's brand. It, yeah, it definitely feels like an older, um, like yeah, been here forever. Maybe two thousand five would yeah. be a sexy rebrand, but not anymore. Um, next up, though, you also uh, wanted to bring up Pentagram's rebrand um, of Doctor Jart Plus. What was it about this one that um, had you bring it up for inspiration? Yeah, so we all know that pentagram is just like legendary, but like in this case, you may think you may look at it and think like, oh, like really nice branding, like really minimalistic with a pop of color. But actually, if you scroll down, you can see that um, the shapes of the product um, were designed based on oil cans. I think this is how you call them. Um... So this is like, like, the, like you see. can scroll down and like see the explanation of this. Oh, wow. I got to So Dr. here. Dr. Jar plus containers combine the classic forms of cosmetics and beauty products with unexpected industrial objects like oil and kerosene cans. Yeah. And I thought this was like really cool because it shows you that design goes beyond the label and the color palette. And like, it's basically everywhere, like in, even in the shape of the product. Oh, that's a that's a brilliant point. Um, I think that kind of having that as a backbone of like silhouettes. I know when you go into character design, they always say you should do silhouettes first and then build out from there. 
I think mm -hmm. this is one of the unique experiences where you're really looking at the bottle as a silhouette and what it represents more so than anything else, which is really cool. Um, would you ever work with the idea of like reimagining a container that you have for a brand? I know like originally you have these boxes that you have for like the hot chocolate. That's just like a generic box, but would you mm -hmm. ever kind of go into the field of exploring different shapes for the products that you create? Yeah, I would love, love to do that for a brand in real life, but right now, um, like it's not accessible for me, uh, because like I, like I, I, I am outsourcing like different mockups and mm -hmm. like there is not a lot of stuff that you can find out there. So uh, because of that, I really got into like 3D design. I'm still learning it, so I'm not good at it. So I can like really play with different types of like shapes of the packaging and then place my own design on top of it. No, that's fantastic. I, you know, I feel like it's all about continuing to uh, advance your career and find new ways to uh, do what you love, but also find ways to reach further for it. Um, next up, the last thing that you have for um, inspiration is you have this good time, Monty, um, the perfect host for curious travelers um, and very illustrative as well. Um, what made you uh, pick this one? So this is actually a Polish um, design studio. And um, this Monty is like a um, sightseeing company, I guess. Like they uh, make like guides for different cities. Mm -hmm. And I just love this like whole branding because like it really makes me want to go out with Monty and explore the city and have like a couple of drinks with him. So it's like really friendly and inviting. And I guess that was like the whole idea behind of it. And I yeah. also like really love this like hand drawn illustrations that I like not perfect, but are like still cool with this whole branding. Which makes me think also of the idea that I know we were looking at your sketchbook earlier and we could see the physical remnants of like your hand on paper. It would be cool to see some of those things reflected in uh, actual um, like final piece that you have of a rebrand like. It makes, like you said, it feels very young. It feels um, very organic and real. And yeah. it's, you know, mixed along with very clean type, which is cool. Yeah. And like the whole color palette is like just, I don't know, it's, it looks to me so yummy. Like I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I also really like how they have the um, uh, coordinates here at the top yeah. of the page, <laughs> which is so specific and down to a point, but like also just adds that ownership and identity to um to the brand which is really cool yeah i really like, like how the o is on its side it's yeah. such a subtle change but it's a very cool change yeah and i love this type of like typefaces now how do you feel about this though okay so they have the simplified logo for sizes smaller than 30 millimeters but then they have um the social media icon which is organic I don't know if I'm into the idea of this division because I wouldn't necessarily tie these two together. What do you think? Um, so I have like a kind of love hate relationship with this icon because I can like I can get out of my head McDonald's when I look at it. Oh no, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And I just can't look at it without thinking of McDonald's. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if this yeah. was like um like they wanted to like achieve that or like that's that was like mistake and they didn't think about this but like i don't know also the strange thing about this one too though is that the dot at the end of monty is not the same width as the dot after the m which is annoying to me <laughs> like that even more so makes me think that it's two different brands because this is so much smaller than this one yeah, I guess that the icon was like uh, designed to fit like the illustrations, maybe. Mm -hmm. And like the circles that are in the cropping of different social medias. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Rick is saying that he likes the TY ligature, which I also really like. I, I think that uh, of this branding, I think the this like lockup of serif and sans serif is the strongest thing i mm. like the idea of the illustrative hand-drawn thing but i don't need to see that reflected in the type of the branding because as we scroll through this whole thing that's the first time that we had seen any sort of 
hand drawn type, you know? Yeah. Um, it is interesting. Not to say that it's not a successful rebrand, it's just that's a part that I wouldn't necessarily have included. Um, it's got great colors, like you were saying, they're so yummy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's cool how they do them in sets of three, though. Um, yeah. more so than anything else, it's just kind of like these three will always work together and then they don't really repeat anywhere. Like that pink doesn't pop up in any other set, mm -hmm. um, which is an interesting way to approach. And this is kind of like, kind of similar to um, the Chamberlain coffee. So I guess I just mm -hmm. like really like this style. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there's definitely crossovers. I can see um, connections of it. Um, I think that they're unique in their own. And I also feel like your stuff is also unique from it. Um, but I could definitely see how there is definitely a through line through all of these pieces that you can still be like, oh, okay, yeah, like Claudia could be into that, <laughs> um, which is really cool. I also really like how they implemented the colors here into the bands of the hat. Um, yeah. And, and I just love that this is like not perfect because I, I feel like um, in my personal work, I struggle with things being perfect. And if they are not perfect, then I don't want to post them and like see the rest of the world. Like, right. Yeah. And there's also just a really good brand um, case study as well for making it um, just like a really good walkthrough of the brand and all the different things that they created. So you said this is a Polish um, design agency? Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. They've got some great stuff. I know, yeah, but by all means, like, yeah, I have that one critique, but <laughs> by and large, it's a it's good walkthrough of everything that they have. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like really good for designers to look up those different design studios and like see their um see how they like present the branding mm -hmm. and like their presentations and le like learn from this and in implement this into your own like brand guidelines. Yeah. Um, well, we're about an hour into the show, um, and that's when we like to do our monkey paws. You can either take a second to breathe. And I'm just going to peace out. <laughs> um, you can uh, either go along with it or you can take a second to breathe. Um, but he... oh, sorry, I, I didn't know that you were asking me a question. <laughs> no, 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 I, I accidentally pressed the back button on accident while I went to go press it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so... so, um, this is the um. Uh, this is the point of uh, monkey paws. I'll give you a little break and uh, I'm going to walk everybody else through the uh, good old monkey paws. So uh, monkey paws, if you guys are not familiar with, are this really good carpal tunnel um, exercise that you can use with your hands to make sure that you're taking care of your hands and not um, hurting them as you uh, are going throughout the day. This is also a really important time to say, get up, stretch, save your work. If you're working on anything, it's super important. Um, and, uh, also just keep in mind to like, look away and at, at a farther distance and then, you know, look back. So they say that you should do that more frequently, especially with like blue lights, but I kind of always forget about it anyway. So remember to look at something far away because you're looking at your computer or your phone or whatever. And we're going back for your quick monkey paws. All right. So we'll, we'll do this, um, nice and quick for you. And um, I, uh, will walk you guys through the four different exercises that you have. Found it on Anna Davis Court's um, streams originally. But what you do is you reach out both of your hands like this. All right. Like that. And you're gonna bring it in. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Noises make it work better. Go and you release. If this hurts at any point, stop. Not a medical professional, not medical advice. This is just uh, exercise that I'd learned. Uh, then you go down. Gonna pull up. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. You're gonna hold that. Release. Then you're going to go over, bring it in, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, like that, and then release, and then go like this, one more, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, and then you release. So then you're going to shake it up. We're going to do it one more time through. Um, so you can do this as many times as you want. Uh, basically, uh, I think the suggestion is like three to four times, but 
I normally only do it like two times on the stream just because like you guys aren't tuning in just to see me wave my hands around. Um, so the first thing go like this. One, we'll, we'll just do like a little count of five for each one of these. So one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh, release. Then down like this. One, two, three, four, five. Release. Ooh, that one felt weird. Okay. Uh, <laughs> flip it over and bring it in to one, two, three, four, five, and release. And then one towards you, which is one, two, three, four, five, and release. Um, and yeah, Sam is in the uh, chat saying that he always forgets to also take a moment to save. So make sure you save. Especially if you've been drawing something and you haven't saved in a while, you don't really use that work. Trust me, I've lost plenty of things because of power outages, computers dying, you name it. Uh, you don't want to have that happen. So, um, thank you for everyone to. Oh, Sam also says I do monkey paw standing up to give my poor legs some circulation. See, making it smart. I have a stand up desk. I never switch it to stand up. Probably should, but I don't. <laughs> But thank you, Anna, for um, walking us through that uh, indirectly. And then I got to then put that out onto you guys. Um, and I'm glad that everybody else is enjoying the exercises as well. Hopefully your hands will be all good for the rest of the day because this is our last episode. So I won't be able to guide you through it anymore. But we'll do it tomorrow as well. Um, moving on, bringing back Claudia. Claudia, Buck will bring you back in. Um, uh, we have a fun little segment that I like to call show me your collection so can i see your collection um could i see your collection <sighs> so when we were talking about collections it's always changing from person to person there's always a bunch of different things that we can look at and um i know one of the things that you said that you like to collect and figure out is your typefaces and your fonts that you have on your computer um and you have a collection of them from adobe type kit that you would like to share um yeah. so let's check those out all right let's see here so the first one that we have up uh we have this handy dandy uh slide that you went and you sent me over um and the first one we have is <laughs> oh no blaze face which that that that's a that's a handful of a name to begin with um <laughs> what is it about ono oh blaze face that you like so much um can we like show it on the screen from I don't yeah yeah, yeah i gotta pull it up first real quick um so here we go i have ono oh blaze face i can also go ahead and i can put the um uh i can put the link into the chat for you guys as well but here it is it's by james edmondson from ono oh type company um, yeah, they like name each of their typeface like oh no and their the name. Yeah. So what what made you um pick this one? Which one do you like this one so much? Um it's like really funky and good as a display font and like really unique. And like I feel like sometimes um like Adobe has like a great great selection of free fonts, but sometimes it's like really hard hard to find them and like get to them. And when I like saw this one on Adobe, I like couldn't believe that I can get it for free. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like particularly the one um, down here with um, uh, it's kind of I guess it's italicized kind of. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. But with the italics, it really adds to the curvature of all of yeah. the different letter forms. Um, it's like really it, and like cool how it wraps around and like create this sort of a wave or something, I think. Like kind mm -hmm. of a wave. It's like really flowy. 100%. Um, and it's also cool to this, uh, it's relatively, I mean, it's a few months old now at this point, but now it feels like all of the um, uh, typefaces that are on uh, Adobe Type Kit also have all these like execution. Um, thumbnails that you can go and you can see them working in different ways whereas you can you know also just be like offset with claudia because then you can also check out how it looks um based off of whatever you need and of course there's always try it in adobe express <laughs> so next up um we have uh cooper black which is uh a bit more of a classic um, yeah <laughs> Where uh, do you normally incorporate Cooper Black into your um, your workflow? 
I feel like this one like fits um, different types of projects or maybe like every type of projects if you like can incorporate it like well. So, but I feel like also this looks really nice on like posters as a like big chunky um, headline. And like, uh, I think in Adobe you can get like only two two weights of this font, but like mm -hmm. there is actually like um, Cooper Light that looks really nice and looks like really good on like skincare pack packagings or more like softer brandings. And this one is like more on like those in your face brands. And so right. like, it's like really cool. Then you can do like very versatile things with it. And connect the two of like both like loud or use something that's a little bit more subtle. Yeah. Um, next one we have is Ace That Nova, which I don't know if I've heard of this one before. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this one. This one is oh, a little yeah. bit so more retro looking. I feel like this is this one is like really popular right now and trendy because like see it all over Instagram in like more of those like Gen Z brands. <laughs> So yeah, Gen Z's got their style. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's this one. Um, I think it's also one of the cool ones that it's like you can probably use it for a body copy, or you could even use it for a header. Um, I mean, especially with like black, you would obviously not use that for body copy, but um, it is cool to be able to like see how it goes all the way down to light. Um, by the way, I was supposed to be putting these in the chat, aren't I? And of course, says, I see a theme. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else we got? We got New Spirit. Yeah, this is a, also a very popular one. And New Spirit. Ooh, this one's pretty. I like this one. Yeah, this is like also good for oh, like. I already have it activated. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, but this one, I feel like, yeah, is also really good for. Um, copy. It's interesting they have condensed. I don't know if I've used the condensed before, but I really like the regular. And this, there's like actually a new way to it that's like um, black, I think. I don't know if the black is there. And it mm -hmm. like looks so good. That's very cool. I also feel like I should like bring up the text size so people can see it at home. Um, quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. That's right, Cornell. You got it, dog. I <laughs> get it, dog. <laughs> um next up what's another selection that you have we have um halyard hey halyard halyard is that how you say it? that's the funny thing about like typefaces like half the time we're saying it by ourselves in our dark rooms where we're designing that i feel <laughs> like you don't <laughs> necessarily know the proper terminology or anything this one's one of the interesting ones where you have like micro which has this adjustment so that you can make it really tiny, but it feels so different from regular. Um, do you find yourself ever using anything like micro? Um, not really. Like this one doesn't like suit my style, so I don't see myself using it. But I chose this one. I won't say its name, <laughs> but I chose this one based on how the letter A looks, because I often feel like I can find like the perfect sans serif uh, font for body copy because of the A and like something is like always off with this letter and this one is like perfect. Yeah, it's just like, ah! No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's so interesting to see how, like, yeah, like this is still the same typeface, but these three just all feel so different. Um, obviously when it gets a little bit bigger, it feels a little bit more um, cohesive. But it's also a really flexible font as far as like going all the way from black all the way down to extra light. So if you need to do something that feels like a variable font that might not actually be variable font, it seems like this is a good solution. Um, and then it also has just a lot of even variants as far as um, having like text and display, mm -hmm. which is kind of pretty cool. I kind of never know what is like the difference and like I even put like, put them like side to side and try to compare them and I guess mm -hmm. like I see a little bit of difference but like I don't know. <laughs> no I think um, I think it, it's like a lot of a use case to use case. I mean um, I, I have never gotten too deep into the typeface world um, as far as like designing. I've never created my own 
but um it is one where it's like if you ask a type designer they will tell you definitely why there's a big difference <laughs> yeah um we have moray or morit i guess it's moray um yeah this so one feels a little is... bit closer to black le- black letter yeah so this is actually uh the font that i use in my own um uh, identity mm-hmm. like you you could you could see it on the instagram and yeah there it is oh what do you yeah. know <laughs> it's the ones where you have where you have the big type right where you have like um the is instagram worth it for graphic designers yeah it's like very unique and i see why some of the some of people might hate it and some of the people might love it but i mm-hmm. i definitely like love it <laughs> yeah no it's um I, I think it definitely has a lot of personality but also doesn't feel like it's too tied down to any like specific brand that's already um prominent anywhere yeah, um, and I see it um, that it is used um, a lot in the skincare branding world. Right. Um, obviously, we have obviously next. Obviously. Ooh, ooh. Oh, and this one's a lot wider too. This one like feels like it's um oh wow, it's actually all over the place. It also has a super condensed mm-hmm. if you need it. Um and this one it feels like it reads really well for clarity. It also feels like um oh, what's the one? There's one for Converse that I used that um that had something very similar with like a wide stance. But this is really cool how how much of a changeable font this is. That's really cool. So I don't know if I want to go through all the other. Um, we have what, like six more outside of that. Do you have any? Do you have one more favorite out of um, the, these remaining like six or so? Um, so I really love um, Antique Olive. Antique Olive. Let's check it out. Yeah. And why do you love Antique Olive so much? As you can see, like it's really, I don't know. It gives me like this different like type of vibe that is like really funky and like for the cool designs <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely it feels um this one almost feels almost kind of like nike almost um or something that's like very 90s inspired but is very clearly made in the 2020s um especially with its italicized kind of uh regular italic i think it's really neat but it would be cool to see if um, have you incorporated any of these into any of your existing designs. Um, I keep them on the list of yeah, the fonts that I want to use. Right. Yeah. No, because it's just like it's cool to be able to go through and be able to see kind of how different um, typefaces affect the different things that you're creating. Um, this one is a wild one. Yeah. Where did you get this typeface from? Um, I don't remember actually, but I, sometimes I can spend like hours searching for the right typeface or like the one that I really like, because I'm really big on type because I believe that it could either make or break the brand. Exactly. And Um, I know that some of designers don't like put a lot of thought into it, but like for me, it's like even more important than like color palette and yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's very instantly recognizable. Um, I mean, especially when you're using ones that have such a, a bold statement to them. Um, did you make these illustrations? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I like the idea of like the leaves being these stars. It almost feels kind of Jetson esque um, or like Hannibal Barbera kind of vibe. Um, and then you also have it kind of matched with a softer, more inflated one over here with this um, blueberry jam, which is cool. Yeah, so this was like the type of um, design that I just feel felt like really creative and wanted to do something in Illustrator. So I just like put random shapes together and this is what came out of it. Yeah. Well, what turned out great. I mean, this one also you can see kind of um, mirrors that one that we looked at in your sketch that was going off with the flannel and the pieces that were going around mm-hmm. uh, with the different shapes that are happening, um, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see here. 
I think we have about time for just look at like one more or so. Um, is there a certain project in here um, that you would like to talk about? Hmm. So I really like the uh, Good Makers one. Okay. Yeah, and I've heard that a lot of people like really. Like, oh, this is like actually just like the cover for this, <laughs> but you can yeah. see it um, in the other posts. Would be in this one maybe. Oh no, these are just your favorite logos from the year, though. This is pretty yeah. cool, though. Um, we have Kirk and Flaw. We have Vask, the Salad Store. Oh, that's nice. Honesty, that's nice. Friendly Faces. <laughs> so cool. And so, do you find like a certain format that you have when you're creating these, um, or like a, a certain template that you have when you're going and you're creating a reel? Because obviously, like you have these great thumbnails, but they also add personality to it when you're working on them. Um, do you feel like you have to edit them a lot or do you kind of just go with what inspires you in the moment and you kind of just stitch together the videos and put type, type on top of it? Yeah, so sometimes like I'm, um, I put more thought into planning the reel, um, mm -hmm. but sometimes I just like wake up and I want to do this and this and like I just kind of feel myself and put the text and put the reel together and just like post it. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. I... I feel like um, I have more fun with the reels than my designs because I'm like really um, strict with the things that I post on my Insta because um, as I mentioned before, I feel like a lot of designers, including me, struggle with like um, the perfection perfectionism and like the projects have, has to be perfect. And Absolutely. I feel like um, that is not the case for my reels. So I guess that's why I like um, doing them because I feel like they don't have to be perfect. You feel like you have a little bit more of freedom to yeah. explore and experiment with different things that you have. But I think that also might just be like a, a, a farce in your head though because I feel like a lot of the ones that you have with the posts that you have all feel very strong, all very, very connected. Um, I like what you did here with the with the patterns of the purples and the greens. Um and it, it, I can see how you can easily get stuck in your head with perfectionism. But now looking at all the different pieces of inspiration that we had and then coming back here, I can totally see um, connections that they have. They still feel unique, but they still definitely feel like the ones that you have with um, like Ember Chamberlain's um, illustrations mm -hmm. or the one um, from the Polish agency that we had. Yeah, I have to do like more of those because I really like how they can add to the brand. But like this is the type of um, like thing that I still struggle with, like being like perfect and absolutely in love with it to post it and to include it in the branding. Like the whole idea is for them to not be perfect. Right. <laughs> so yeah. It's not rugs. Um, one last thing that I do actually want to touch on before I forget, though, um, mm -hmm. is I know that you were talked about that you have these boards behind you, right? These snowboards. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you you painted these snowboards, right? Yeah. So these I these are like wooden snowboards, and like I designed the illustrations and I hand painted them. Because I think I saw them also on your reels. You had a reel about, um, or maybe it was just a story about how you had recently started kind of collecting and um, designing these snowboards of yours. Um, did you just use regular paint for that? Or do you have to get uh, yeah. like a specific kind of like wood paint for snowboards? Um, no, that was just like a regular black paint. And then can we see the other one that's um, behind your yeah. head? That one right there. So like... Yeah, they're beautiful because they're, because they're full size and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then did you sketch them out on something else before you kind of messed with them um, onto the final piece? Or did you just go straight to the final board? Yeah, so I did like a set of eight illustrations that uh -huh. um for snowboards and like i had to like choose two of them because i obviously have only like two boards to paint so i choose the ones that i like the most so like those two uh -huh. and just like print out uh, print them out on paper and then like trace it to the board and paint it over oh that's so cool I, I've never worked on something like large and like transferring in a way that like you have to go and then take it from one piece to another. And I'd, I'd be so nervous about, you know, like you said, <laughs> yeah. like perfection and having the idea of that transfer. Yeah, I was like really stressed that I 
mess up something and then there's like no no going back and no command z so no um, command z yeah <laughs> um cornell says that those look like totems which yeah they it totally could be totems so oh, like yeah. different um <laughs> kind of call out like the vertical format to the extreme because we're so used to like 1080 by 1920 now but this is even something that's even thinner and and taller i feel like it's something that i don't know it forces you to to make new choices but at the same time the choices are something that also makes really great work come out of it so yeah i will i honestly would love to do more of them because i feel like i'm like right now i'm at this point that i feel like really stuck into like um a digital art and doing everything on my computer so that was like a really nice change to like paint something with my hand in real life on like natural materials like wood yeah i know talk about switching from like digital to just going to completely physical <laughs> you know um but cool that puts us at about time um obviously we can find you on uh instagram at so excited now it's a little bit of the work that we went through um and look for today thank you for sharing your work with us thank you for um walking us through some of your process and some of your favorites uh what can we expect from you next what's what's coming down the line so i'm definitely going to be post posting on my instagram and like sharing my knowledge even more because uh right now i'm like really into as you as you mentioned before making reels and like sharing the stuff that that i learned throughout my journey through this like short um type of content mm -hmm. so yeah and like i really try to explore my style more so like if you want to keep up how this is going to look then you can follow me on my instagram and see how my style is going to evolve brilliant well i'm excited to see what comes next um it was a pleasure talking to you and thank you for talking us through everything um and make sure you guys check her out on so excited now on instagram yeah thanks so much for having me and thank you guys for hanging out with us yeah it was great thank you so much all right um that okay. is all for us for today for um offset but we will be back tomorrow um we got a loaded cast still uh including um kendall who is currently already in the chat right now um and so uh we have that lined up for tomorrow um we're gonna have a really good time make sure you tune in same time same place uh, thank you to everyone that came on today. Um, it was a, a pleasure to talk to everyone. I'm going to go get a big glass of water um, and relax for a little bit. But I will see you all back here tomorrow. Um, and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Bye. still here it's over go home go <laughs>